The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Welcome on this Labor Day holiday to Grace in Focus. Thank you for joining us today. As we continue our study in Mark, we are in the 11th chapter, and this is where Jesus curses a fig tree that is fruitless. What does this fruitless fig tree represent, and why does Jesus do this? Grace in Focus is the radio broadcast and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. Thanks again for joining us, and we'd love for you to know us better. You can find out a lot about us at our website, faithalone.org. There you can read our daily blogs, and you can subscribe to our bi-monthly magazine called Grace in Focus. There are lots of other things there, too. Find it all at faithalone.org. Now with today's discussion from Mark 11, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. And we are doing a series on the Gospel of Mark in anticipation of a commentary, a standalone commentary that GES is going to put out, hopefully, in the next couple months. Who's that written by? Me, as a matter of fact, yeah. The Most Right Reverend Holy Dr. Dr. Colonel Ken Yates, yes. Yes. But what we decided to do... And you should see his shirt today. It says, Born Squared... John 3.3. 3. <laughs> well, you got to be born from above. Or is that born twice? Born Whatever twice. It is, the two is superscript. But we are in chapter 11. And what Bob and I are doing, if you've been following this, is we just pick a passage in each chapter just to give you an idea of how we might study or look at the Gospel of Mark. Yeah, but I might point out, you know, so far we've been through 10 chapters And I did take the course by Dr. John Grasmick in Greek on Mark, so I've been through Mark, but let's see, that was over 40 years ago, and I'm not certainly not an expert in Mark, but I have found that going through just one passage in each chapter with the way you bring in the other things in the chapter, it's been a terrific introduction to Mark, and I hope all of you are finding it that way as well. So I think we'll find it that way here in Mark 11. You've got something about, what is it, the fighting fig tree? No, not the fighting, the fruitless. <laughs> the, the fruitless feckled fig tree or something the like that. The fruitless feckled fig tree that is Israel. <laughs> right, and that's what we're going to look at. This is found in Mark 11, starting in verse 12. And it goes through verse 21. And this is kind of a sandwich thing, too, because you get fig tree, cleansing of the temple, fig tree. First he curses the fig tree. Then he cleanses the temple. Then we see what happened to the fig tree. That's right. If you remember, for those who've been following this, back in an earlier chapter where Jesus meets Jairus with his daughter. Okay, that's the beginning. And then you have the woman with the issue of blood. And then he heals his daughter. And so the daughter of Jairus is at the beginning and at the end. That's like the bread on a sandwich. And then there's a story in between, which is the bologna or peanut butter uh, between the bread. You've got the exact same thing here. You've got Jesus curses the fig tree. He sees the fig tree, curses it. Then he goes in and cleanses the temple. And then the next verses are, they see the fig tree withered away. And so you've got the fig tree at the beginning. And you got the fig tree at the end, and in the middle, you've got this story. And as we saw with the woman with the issue of blood and the girl who's raised from the dead, they're connected. Obviously, there's a connection here. And so when you study the Gospel of Mark, what is that connection? What's the connection between the cursed fig tree and the cleansing of the temple? Bingo. Yeah, what is it? What is it that Mark is trying to tell Now, do you know, or we're just throwing it out for everybody to guess? Well, see, what it is, I'm writing this commentary and... I don't know the answer, so can someone call in and tell me? Or <laughs> He does know the answer. He's What do you call pulling our chain or something? Yanking yeah. our chain. Yeah. Yanking our chain. At least that's what we, I don't know if that's a civilian term, but we use that in the military. You're yanking my chain. Yeah. I, I guess we use that in the civilian world, so. too. I think I'm a civilian. And you use it. There you <laughs> so in this, when we look at it, I think one good thing uh, to see about this is not only does he curse the fig tree— and then cleanse a temple, and then you see the curse tree after that, the, the fig tree after that. But even before he curses the fig tree, where is he? He's in the temple. So you have the temple, the fig tree, the temple, the fig tree. Okay, now this is, this is nutty, and I'm just stream of consciousness here. But Adam and Eve, after they sin, they're ashamed of themselves and they know Jesus is coming and he's going to be seeing them in the garden. 
What kind of garments did they make for themselves? Didn't they cover themselves with fig leaves? If it was fig leaves, then this would be an association with the curse. Well, what's interesting about the cursing of the fig tree is before he curses it, he's in the temple. And it says in the previous verse that when he arrived in Jerusalem, he went to the temple. And what did he do? Verse 11, he looked around. So he... He saw the temple, what was going on in the temple. And he saw all the things going on there. He saw all the things that were going on. Which we're going to find out he's not pleased with. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to see in the very next verse, he sees a fig tree. And he's also not pleased with And he's with not it. pleased with what he finds. Ah, you got good insight. There you go. Yeah. And so, and, and what was it that he saw in the temple? It was not bearing the fruit that it should have been. Ah. Uh, it looked good. He rides into Jerusalem. He sees the temple coming down the Mount of Olives. He goes there. It's a beautiful well, building. Well, okay, if that's the case, then wouldn't that imply then that by him being disappointed with the temple and turning over the tables and all, and all that, that just like the fig tree gets cursed, Israel's going to get cursed? Absolutely. And just like the fig tree dries up from the roots, so Israel is going to cease being a nation for a time? Yes, and particularly the temple. And in fact, two chapters from here, the disciples are going to say, look at this beautiful temple. And he goes, well, do you see it? There's not going to be a stone left upon it. So this is anticipating 70 AD between 66 and 70 and the Jewish war and the destruction of the temple and all that's anticipated here. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this as a picture of what's going to happen to the nation of Israel. Why? Because they rejected the king and the offer of the kingdom. We will rejoin in just a moment. But years ago, Zane Hodges wrote the gospel under siege. Sadly, this is still true. And GES president Bob Wilkin has recently written its sequel. Bob's new book, The Gospel is Still Under Siege, is a book about theological clarity on the biblical teaching about eternal salvation. It is available now. Secure yours today at the Grace Evangelical Society's bookstore. Find it at faithalone.org slash store. That's faithalone.org slash store. Now back to today's content. So Israel, as the fruit tree, was expected to produce wonderful fruit that would please God, but it's not. And so it, God's not done with Israel. Exactly. Uh, but he is going to uh, destroy it. And, well, not destroy it completely, but he is going to at least kick them out of the land until he brings them back in 1948. And then we don't know if this is the final gathering or not, but assuming it's the final gathering, at some point in the near future, the Lord Jesus will return after the rapture yes, and the tribulation. Yeah, this generation of Jews and the temple that was standing in Jesus's day is going to be destroyed just as the fig tree is. Yeah. And that's what's going on. So he sees the temple and he, he has to leave because he has to leave. He's going to spend the night outside of the city gates and they're about to close them. So he's leaving. So he's, he's looking at it. Okay. He doesn't like what he sees. And then as he comes back to the temple, he sees a fig tree. He sees it and it has all the leaves on it. So he's expecting to find something that's edible on there. He's expecting to find fruit, just like he went to the temple expecting to find fruit and didn't like it, he says it, so he curses the fig tree. And then what happens? In verses 15 through 19, he goes into the temple and he cleanses it out. It's a place that's not producing the fruit. What does he see in there? He sees all the corruption. You a, den a, a den of thieves. And what do we see? What, what's going on there? They're ripping the people off. The religious leaders are ripping the people off, overcharging them for their sacrifices. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. That's what you would expect. That's the fruit that you would expect, it, particularly if you're standing on the Mount of Olives looking at this beautiful building. So he can see the leaves, the beautiful right. building. Exactly. The <laughs> but there's no fruit in there. Yes, and he gets in there and he goes, you expect it to be a place of godliness and worship and pleasing to God. And what does he find? Well, are there churches that have <laughs> real nice buildings and nice cathedrals and exalted pulpits? And they've got their clergy and these wonderful garments and they've got the, the beautiful robes and they've got even hats and they've got censers with the incense in it. And they got all the paraphernalia. 
And yet that may not be pleasing to God, too. Exactly. What it looks like on the outside. Because his fig tree looks good from a distance. Just like the temple looked good from a distance. But then when you get close to it, what do you find? Well, what did the Lord find? In both cases. Yeah. He gets up to the, temp- the fig tree. There's nothing there. He goes into the temple, gold and all that, and he gets there, and he finds a den of thieves. You know, there's no fruit. And by the way, this would also go back to John the Baptist's and Jesus's earthly, from the very beginning of Mark. He wanted the nation to turn from its sins and produce righteousness. Yes. Well, they haven't repented. The nation has not repented. And so what's going to happen? Well, Judgment is going to fall. You Especially that's evident when God has sent repeatedly prophets to Israel, and they've been not responsive to the prophets. Now God sends his only begotten son, his only son. And what do they want to do? They want to kill him. Exactly. Look at the fruit. They're produ- <laughs> and they're about to kill him. Yes. Right? And mean, that's what's not- happening in Mark. Yeah. This is the Passion Week. Wow. So that's the fruit. Now, the last thing I would say about this is, is there any, and I don't know the answer to this one, the significance of it, it's withered from the roots up. Yeah, what does that mean? It could mean that the religious leaders who he's about to get into these confrontations with, and ah. they, they are the root problem here. They're the ones that's going to condemn him, hand him over to the Romans to be crucified. So this could be a implication that it is going to be this temple is gone and it's starting with the religious leaders the sadducees the high priest because they are the ones who are about to condemn they're all complicit in they're this. all yeah they're the ones that's made it a den of thieves so it could be that the roots and the fig tree is just completely destroyed because of that well, there's a lot of truth in that. Spiritual leaders are yes. supposed to lead. Right. And, so, and if they lead wrongly, whether it's Israel or the church, the impact is disastrous upon the people. Yeah. And it's going to have devastating impact upon the nation of Israel here. That's what I think is going on there. And just like Israel ultimately is secure because God guarantees the future of Israel, but not every generation of Jews was guaranteed to be in the kingdom or to be born again or whatever. And the kingdom certainly wasn't guaranteed to come in the first century, and it didn't. In the same way, all believers during the church age are eternally secure. But that doesn't mean that when Christ returns, we're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Not at all producing the fruit. We've got to be producing the fruit that's pleasing to him. Yeah, we can make applications to the church here, but here in the fig tree, it's definitely talking about the nation of Israel and the temple. So you need to be a dispensationalist to understand scripture. I believe so. Amen. (laughs) Uh, We hope this is helpful. And in the meantime, keep keep grace grace in focus. We invite you to check out our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday five-minute YouTube videos at YouTube Grace Evangelical Society. You will love the content and learn a lot. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. If you'd like to learn how to become one, you can find out more by going to faithalone.org. On the next episode... A widow woman whose tiny gift was really very large. Please join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.